Welcome back to Tech, Tesla and Trends. We're looking at a 24-hour period in which a presidential candidate utilized Twitter spaces to make his announcement that he's running for president, and in which Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford, announces they're going to partner with Tesla to utilize the supercharging network and the NACS charging plug that Tesla has pioneered. This is truly an amazing day. And if that wasn't enough, there's also that little nugget there for Neuralink. They got FDA approval for a human trial. That's pretty impressive too. I know there were a lot of people out there saying that'll never happen. And it won't certainly won't happen in the six month to a year time frame that Elon was talking about at the Neuralink day. Now, that will be another conversation piece. But in, you, you just look at the day that Elon has had, that 24-hour period has been very impressive and impactful for three of his companies. For those of you out there that are saying, is Elon paying attention? This is really an answer to you. The thing that I've, I've commented on on Twitter a number of times, Elon is paying attention. When you work 80 to 100 hours a week and you have the energy and, and vigor that Elon has, you're going to be able to accomplish more than anybody else of your comparable peers. Now, in, in actual reality, if you look at a lot of the CEOs that are out there, how many hours a week do they actually spend in their office working specifically on their business? I'm going to guess it's probably less than 30. They're, the rest of the time they spend traveling between meetings and appointments with lawyers or other things like that. This is one of those details. Elon is able to execute on five companies because he's putting in the time on top of that. He has above average engineers and management at every single one of his companies. Elon is able to execute on his vision because he is exactly that. The visionary leader offering a, a clear, precise direction for his people to execute on the vision. This is what makes Elon Musk a phenomenal leader. Now, what does this mean for Tesla? Now that Ford is on board and they're going to utilize the supercharging network and their charger, <laughs> anybody else that doesn't hop on this deal? So we're talking GM, which it'll, I'll be shocked if they do. I mean, BS Barra doesn't have a clue what she's talking about when she says she's leading. They're not. They're behind the eight ball. If you look at when Roe had to say about the Hummer, holy cow, 2,500 pounds for the battery? Just the whole enclosure there? No, that's, <laughs> they have, they're carrying around a massive anchor around their neck. So it will be telling in which companies jump on board. Because now that Ford has made this admission that Tesla is the defined and de facto leader of EVs, that they have the market's share on charging networks, and by, by default, the charger, not just the charger, but the, the plug-in that they made, which is so much simpler than what was nationally mandated, I'm no surprise there. When you govern by a committee, it's nothing but garbage anyways. But in this case, Ford making that decision and voluntarily adopting Tesla's uh, charging plug, that changes the game. And one by one, the smart companies are going to shift over to the way that Tesla does charging because they're gonna want access to the charging network. It's the largest in the world. It is something like 98.9 to 99.6%, whereas Electrify America or whatever their counterpart is in, in Europe, there are consistent hit pieces on them for their lack of ability to charge or to be available for a charge. This is a major victory for Tesla, and it's proof that their vision to go ahead and go it alone and build out a charging network. And now they're going to reap the rewards. 
But it's also a victory for something that people aren't talking about today, Mega Pack. Because at each one of these stations, there's going to be a very large battery. They'll be charging that from solar energy as well. And where that leads is battery backup for your neighborhood or for that area even more so than what exists today. This is a footprint and a further step by Tesla into the electric utility industry. It's one that people aren't looking at. They're not going to see it coming just the same way that nobody saw how Tesla was building out their, their supercharger network. The same things occurring within the energy market. Tesla is slowly winning this race before anybody even realizes there was a race that was put on in spite of the IRA and all of this other desire to build out renewable energy. Megapack will be there and Tesla's at Tesla charging stations and Tesla will gradually roll out more and more access to Megapacks across the board and that will be banner days for Tesla's energy division and banner days for the charging and it's going to prove very clearly to some of the more vocal opponents that Tesla Energy wasn't a boondoggle, but it was actually something that had vision behind it. Yet again, Elon Musk is not thinking quarter by quarter. It is all about the long-term vision that transforms an entire world's economy from fossil fuel based to an electrical grid and network that is functioning and charging, providing energy in a sustainable fashion. This is what leadership and vision looks like. Some of you are obviously not happy with Elon or his politics. Some of you really hate Ron DeSantis. I don't really care either way. The details here that matter is that Elon's vision and his execution, in spite of all of the naysayers, and those that keep throwing mud at him is consistent and on track. And he gets banner days like this more often than people give him credit for. And this is why Tesla, why SpaceX and Neuralink, Boring Company, and every other Elon venture will continue to win because he has a vision for executing the, the overall goal in a clear and consistent fashion. And he doesn't quit. He's relentless and he is consistent. This matters more than anything else when it comes to this EV revolution, to the race to space and the moon and Mars and I hope Venus as well. This is truly where the future is made. Right here in the vision of one man. And those that choose to follow his vision or multiple visions in this case, the future is one. For those of you who dis like Elon, it's important to understand that you have to provide an opposing vision that is compelling. If you wish to dethrone the visionary leader of the world, you're going to have to provide a vision that is comparable or better. Good luck. I challenge you to do so. I look forward to seeing how you can make the world an even better place than the vision that Elon Musk has laid forward. And indeed, if you've got a vision or an idea, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Until then, We'll see you on Twitter and have a good night.